So this is a video I wanted to do for a long time and it's never come up when I was doing things. Anyway, the video is how to bend sides the way I do it. Now a lot of people do it this way, a lot of people don't. I've done it this way for over 40 years and it's always seemed to work for me. So I'm going to dink around a little bit, show you the setup, and then I'm going to bend a side on it. This is, is my setup. It's very simple. It's a pipe. It's actually a number of pipe parts. It's simple and it's straightforward to use. It's uh, easy to make. It's held onto the bench by a few clamps here. And, uh, and there's, a, there's a torch, very hardware store torch held up with a clamp points straight into the pipes, pipe. And it warms this up pretty quick. And the biggest issue with bending, hopefully you can hear me as this warms up. The biggest issue with this is getting it to where the pipe is not too hot. Now I'm going to be bending Spanish cedar today. It's a very soft wood. It burns easily. You want this pipe to be relatively cool. And that means I'm going to be taking a long time to, to move this wood because one, I don't want it to crack. And it's very curly and it, it could crack. And the other part is that I don't want it to burn. And that's really important as far as I'm concerned. So. Okay, now that's already pretty hot. So I'm going to bring this down quite a bit. I don't need that much heat on this pipe. Now first of all, this thing's hot enough to burn you really good. So be careful. I'm using this block to hold the end partly because I don't want to get burned although it's possible to do that without the block with the block but the other thing is that I, I don't want to crack the end grain and I can't hold the entire side there this is four inches wide um, I don't want to I don't want to try to hold that all with just my hand so I'm starting with the upper bout and this dark streak is, is going to be on the top. Now the upper bout is certainly a tighter bend than the lower bout. And we want to get it as, as close as possible to the actual um, actual shape. Now I'm kind of going off camera here to to do this but I, I will run the camera over there at some point and show you how I'm matching this up. Now I do soak the wood. This is the same process that uh, Mr. Sloan was talking about in his late 60s early 70s book on making guitars now he actually was making a form and then bending the wood over the form i learned about doing the pipe stuff just from reading about other people who were doing it historically and uh, i've been doing it this way ever since now this this particular wood is the second set of sides and I'm doing this um, after I, I put both sets of sides in the water and bend the first set while the second set is marinating in the water. And so this piece is, is wetter all the way through than the first piece was. And as a result, it bends easier. 
the water is soaked in more to the in, inner parts of the the inner cells of the wood and uh, it does bend easier than the first time which is good for you because the first time took a bit longer and we don't want this to take too long so now I'm, I'm just putting enough pressure on this to get it to bend and I'm taking it off I don't want any burning on the inside now when you get to harder woods it becomes necessary to it, it becomes necessary to do higher temperatures and soak the wood longer this wood really didn't soak more than five minutes for the first side about half an hour for the second one here and softer woods like this or, or maple especially maple you don't want it to get too awfully wet the, it can come apart actually on the on the flame not not been a real problem with the Spanish cedar for me but it certainly could happen now we're doing obviously doing the waste at this point this particular shape is not incredibly sharp at the waist like some are I actually like to use the upper bout for sound production and so I don't want the yeah so I don't want the the waist to be too tight so that's you know a choice of of body shapes okay now this this is pretty close checking this and right here I see it's it's pretty close a tad more bend right here and then I'll be doing the lower bow a little bit more there so a tad bit more here now the one of the keys here is is to keep this moving there's a tendency to want to just put it in one place and bend it around the pipe when you do that you're gonna burn the wood guaranteed And especially with a, a nice wood like this, I don't want to burn it. So I'm going to say the waste is done. And now I'm, I'm doing the lower bout. Now, lower bouts generally, because they are more gentle curves, I don't worry that much about getting the curve exact. I clamp this into the form and it will dry to shape, especially a softwood like this. With a rosewood or something like that, I would uh, cook a bolo, especially African blackwood. I would definitely get it very close to shape because I would not presume that the piece of wood is going to take the shape that it's clamped to. With Spanish cedar, Man, it lines up exactly, and it takes the set. So something to, to think about when you're doing your choice of woods. Now, this is hot enough to, to boil the water, but not a whole lot hotter than that. I know, you know, there are some people that like to have electric pipes, and they like to dial in the exact um, heat and that's that's fine but I'm finding that I can figure out what heats I need just based on experience and not so much by numbers but by by feel by touch so I'm going to turn that off and we'll go back. You don't have to do much clamping. The joint holds itself in place. So wherever I've got a gap in here is where I'm going to put a clamp. And I've got a couple here. 
And since I'm done with the torch, I'll just steal this clamp. Also use blocks here so that the clamp is not putting a divot in the side. Now here I could, I've got a little bit of a an opening here so I can pull this apart and I probably will go ahead and, and put another clamp on there and it can be whatever kind of clamp you want. So in this case I'm going to put it back here and it will hold the the whole thing in place. Just a little tight. Okay, now I have this side tight to the to the form all the way around. And so that, that gives us exactly what we need. I think I'll do one more here. I've got a slight divot here. Now the thing that, that makes this not particularly um, critical in terms of the shape is that I am going to be doing full lining on this, which means that the full lining is going to get clamped in here and glued on. It will secure this thing like you wouldn't believe. And this thing will be not exactly immovable, but it will be extremely stiff. And for a soft wood like this, it's, it's a game changer. There it is. That wasn't too bad. It didn't take too long. And that's the result. We're going to wait for, oh, a day or two before we uh, put the full lining on here and start getting it ready to take the top and the back.